how to create a sine oscillator that could be driven by beats per minute. So I'm going to talk you through some of the issues and complications, and then we are going to write a very nice expression using Lua that's going to make it very, very easy to enter exactly the BPM you want and get the results you want. Now, if you're not familiar with Lua, I've got another tutorial that will give you a quick introduction to that, and I'll provide a link in the description. So anyway, let's get started on this. So I've got a pretty elaborate setup here, and I don't want to bother you too much with the details, and I will give you a link to this base project so you can start from the same place that I'm starting. So basically what I've got is I've got a particle emitter and this shape here, this line running across the middle, that I'll link to this merge here, the merge called M. And if I take this merge and I move it up and down, my particle emitter, you, can, you can't really see it yet because it's just emitting one particle, but it's there. And my text over the top is monitoring the vertical position of all of this. So let's reset that back down to 0.5. So what I've also got on my particle emitter is I've animated the X offset. So the X is moving across left to right across the duration of the project. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a sine wave and we're going to do it by adding an expression to this M merge here, the one that's it's basically a dummy merge that's going to drive everything. So I'm going to add an expression to the center. I'm not going to add a simple expression. I'm actually going to modify with expression because it's a little bit easier. So modify with expression. Let's come over here. Let's come to point out. I'm not really that interested in the X, but let's set that to 0.5. What I am interested in is, is the Y, and I'll set that to N1 so that we can use our number controls for this. So let's add an expression to the number one in. So right click expression. So we're talking about building a sine wave. So I'm sure you know that if you type sine, open brackets time, divided by six, for example, close brackets. Let's have a look at what that does. Come to the beginning and press play, and you'll see we get something that looks like a sine wave, but it's all much too big. It's going off the edge of my frame. So what we need to do is we need to reduce the amplitude. So we can reduce the amplitude by multiplying this by something like 0.25. So it's only going to get a quarter of the amplitude. Now our problem is that it's down here, which we don't want. So we can adjust that with an offset. So let's add plus 0.5 and it gets us back to where we want to be. You can see that the particles start emitting from this red line. So let's come back to the beginning and have a look at what we've got. So this is looking a lot more healthy. So now the thing about this project is that we actually want to be able to drive this with beats per minute and I'm going to show you a problem that we have with this basic setup. So at frame zero, we are at 0.5 with our particle emitter. So as we step forward, as you know, a sine wave goes up to one and then down to negative one. And then I want you to look what happens when we get back to the beginning. Well, you notice we can't actually get back to the beginning. We can get back to 0.47 or 0.51, but we can't get back to 0.5, which is where we need to be. So this is where we need to change our expression. What we're going to do is we're going to actually leverage pi. So let's multiply time by pi like this, and let's just slow this down. So let's go for 24 there. So now if we look, we get our same sine wave. And if we come back to here, it's all looking very good. We're exactly at 0.5. If we come back to the mid phase, again, we're exactly at 0.5, which with the other method we weren't. So this is why pi is very useful. So now I want you to look at the frame count here. We're at frame 48, and we've got a divisor of 24. So ideally, we want those to be the same number. And we can do that by multiplying pi times 2. So I'm just going to put this in brackets. So before that time there, I'm going to put some brackets. And after the pi, I'm going to put brackets. And then after the time, I'm going to do times two. So now we've got sine, open brackets, open brackets, time, times two, 
times pi, close brackets, divided by 24, close brackets, times 0.25, which is our amplitude, and plus 0.5, which was our offset. And now, if I come to frame 24, you'll see that that is indeed a complete sine cycle. And so that probably makes more sense is to go with 2 pi. It's the more technically correct one as well. But we want to drive all this with BPM. And we could keep going with this expression method, but I'm actually going to show you something else which is a lot more fun. And I think it's probably quite useful for this. So rather than laboriously type this expression in front of you, I'm just going to copy and paste it from my text editor. And let's have a look at what is happening here. And don't worry, I'll give you a cheat sheet for this expression in the description link. So we are actually using Lua here because we've actually started with a colon and we're using something that looks very different from your normal short form fusion expression language. And what that allows us to do is to actually set some values here. So you'll notice I've set a value of 24 from the frame rate. I've set a BPM of 60, but we could change that to 120 if we wanted. You can see how that has changed the speed of the oscillation there immediately. I've given ourselves an offset that we can add just to get ourselves centered up. And then I've calculated the frequency like this. So that I've multiplied the rate by 60 and divided it by the BPM. So then I've got an amplitude value here. And then I'm just returning an expression that uses all these values here. So what I'm doing is something that's very familiar to you, basically. So we're using sine, open brackets, time, times two times pi, divided by frequency, which was our frequency here. Previously, we were using a number, but here we're calculating it based on the other values. And then I'm multiplying it by the amplitude, just as we did before, to get the height of the wave. And then just adding the offset to get us back into the center. So if I were to change that offset to 0.25, you can see we're not in the right place. 0.5 gets us in the center. And as I say, we can just change this BPM and get exactly what we want. Like this makes life very, very easy. And we've got a perfectly accurate result that we can fine tune to taste. Because the good thing about this Lua expression is that it exposes the input values that we want to target in a very easy to read form. And with a different expression, we can get this nice triangular wave, which is pretty cool. I'll put a link to a cheat sheet for all of these expressions along with the project. So I hope that's been useful. As so often, a fairly simple sounding question actually has a surprisingly interesting answer, I think. So anyway, thanks for watching. See you again soon.